everybody, it's Andrew Cartwright. There is so much going on in Washington. We gotta cover stimulus and jobs report. So much, it's crazy. You wonder, you look at this stuff, it's like drama meets comedy. It's like a dramedy. They say that in Hollywood. Something that's a drama that ends up being comedic. Isn't Washington and what's going on with stimulus and unemployment kind of comical? Just take, for example, this article here. Is Biden delivering the fastest economic recovery in history? And why hasn't anyone noticed? Like you look around and what do you see? You don't see economic recovery. Like for example, today's jobs reports, 4.2% is what the job number, uh, unemployment is. Do you see that? I'd love to know in the comments. Let me know, is that what your experience is? And uh, Biden's vaccine, the CMS vaccine mandate, faces strong opposition from over 150 Republicans led by Jeff Duncan. It's like they just need something to fight about, right? These guys, all they do is fight. Let's fight, fight. But speaking of something different, even more crazy, did Kamala Harris, her AirPods get hacked? Well, Kamala Harris, according to uh, CNET, is right to be wary about her Bluetooth headphones. So have people been listening, hackers been listening to her conversation? Does she know more than she's letting on? You know she was a prosecutor before. She's prosecuted people for those type of crimes. And this just out 30 minutes ago, the US is undercounting COVID deaths. Researchers say now they have a tool to figure it out. Why? Why is it happening? I know so many people, I've had comments, people that don't, that don't believe the numbers, that think that they're so, so wrong in the other direction, saying not that many people were, that it's money driven. And then some people are saying that it's absolutely, there's more, they're not counting. Also, Joe Biden, well, Trump's not the only one that can get sued. Apparently, Joe Biden can get sued as well. Joe Biden is being sued. Apparently, a new uh, Biden's administration rule has upset hospitals, so much so they feel the need to sue. We're not going to, you're not going to want to miss out on this. This is just, I'm telling you, this, this is comical. It's drama, but it's comical. Right before Christmas, find out how these regulations are and the details behind the lawsuit how one state has to pay out $1 billion in unemployment debt, this is great, and how to get unemployment benefits after quitting your job. Hey, wait a minute, Does it, can I still get that? I'm gonna talk about that, there's details. Did you know that if you quit your job the wrong way, you could lose out on benefits? That sounds, quit, quit it the wrong way. Anyway, we're gonna cover that. Hey everybody, it's Andrew Cartwright. I hope you're having a thirsty Thursday. Here's your stimulus unemployment, employment jobs report and financial news for the U.S. In, uh, thir on Thursday, December 9, 2021, my goal always is to give you the best access to information for your business, yourself, and for your loved ones to help you out get government and private money so that you can help weather some of these storms, right? This is um, also in the link down below. I have a free game that you can play. It's really cool. It's a lot of fun. You win prizes. There's no catch. It's just to have fun. This video is dedicated. This channel is dedicated to personal finance, real estate, stock market, crypto credit, and other investments to generate your income. I say that because I'd love you to stick around. Also, I'm giving away $2,000. All you have to do is subscribe, which is completely free. Like the video if you enjoy the content, and throw a comment in the comment section. We're gonna pick a random comment when we hit 200,000 subscribers, which if you've been looking, we are dangerously close, but we gotta hit it. When we hit it, $2,000 is getting launched out to a comment from a subscriber that likes the video. So it's kind of, that's, that's it. It's completely free. You might even burn some calories. Thank you so much to my Patreons who support the channel. For as little as $3, they help out, support all this stuff. They keep a YouTuber going. But first, the American Medical Association, the AME, the Doctors Association that you know they all belong to, right? The American Hospital Association, they are suing the Biden administration. Yes, the Biden administration is in hot water. Does that, good thing his medical comes from like not the hospital or the AMA, right? The president apparently created regulation to prevent patients from getting struck, they got struck with quote, surprise medical bills escalated a fight over the rules. This is incredible. I, also, I've seen, having done thousands of loans, you know, my lending platform that's in the description where people can get loans up to $5 million, the business loans. I've seen so many people that have medical bills 
that destroy their ability to buy anything and have high interest rates on cars the whole bit, all because of one medical incident. It's sad. The lawsuit illustrates the intense lobbying battle that has been playing out among industrial players over a major reform in the healthcare system that is intended to protect patients from getting massive unexpected medical bills. And also, you know, the last bill that we just covered in the last video helped to make sure that the, this money still goes to help people in Medicare not to be cut. The regulations will stop patients, though, from getting their surprise bills after they go to the emergency room or get other health services, and one of the doctors treating them happens to be outside of the insurance network. So if they're not signed up for the insurance network, they're like, hey, I didn't sign up for that. I'm not agreeing to that money. I'm going to send you a bill directly. Well, that's, that's the problem. A very intense fight has gone on for months between doctors and hospitals, insurers and patient groups. All of this over how much insurers will pay doctors once the patients is taken out of the middle of the whole equation. Because if you're paying insurance and you go to a medical place and they take you, shouldn't they take care of you? I don't know. Don't they have an oath or something? I thought doctors had an oath. Do no harm. Well, is giving you a huge bill. What could be more harmful than you got hurt and the next thing you know, you get hurt with the bill and now your interest rate on the car. This is horrible. I hate it because this stuff is real right? It's very real. Apparently, the Biden administration regulation depart, uh, departed from the uh, delicate balance structure in the text of the law. So they're, set, they're trying to distance themselves, right? Like, I ain't in it. You know, it's an A and B conversation. We'll see our way out of it. Well, doctors and hospitals are weir worried <coughs> that the regulations will result in cuts to their payments, their money, which they argue will end up hurting care for patients. Meaning, hey, we, we need our money. Uh, pay us? Yeah. The AMA president, Gerald Harmon, said, quote, if regulators don't follow the letter of the law, patient access to care could be jeopardized as an ongoing health plan manipulation uh, creates an unsustainable situation for physicians, end quote. Unsustainable, basically, they're saying they can't pay their bills, right? If they're, they got to trade their time with somebody who can't pay the bill or doesn't pay the bill, well, then they got a service they didn't pay for. So this, is, this has been a hot issue, right? That's why we've talked about po the potential of public health where it's just covered, like Canada and Europe, which we've been fighting for years. It's been pretty political. This lawsuit also has members of Congress divided, yet these divisions have not fallen along the usual party lines. It's not like a Democratic issue or Republican issue. We have Democrats and Republicans against Democrats and Republicans. It's like a family. They can't get along, right? Sister hates brother. Brother hates cousin. Yeah, it's not good. Over 150 lawmakers from both sides of the aisle, led by some members who are doctors themselves. 150 lawmakers. That's a lot. There's only like, what, 516 people playing there anyway. You have 100 in the Senate that play the game of Senate, right? Two per state. And then you got like 418 or 415 um, in the House, right? That's in the House. That's it. 150, that's a lot when you think about it. And back doctors and hospitals um, objections last month. So there's a lot of support. They give you an idea. That's huge. Almost a third. So this is crazy. I'd love to hear what your thoughts are in this one. Do you think people that go into hospitals should just be taken care of and the government should foot the bill somehow, some way? Or do you think, uh, what do you do? Put them out on the curb? Do you think it's fair that these regulations are what they're doing? Do you think that these hospitals and doctors have the right to sue the administration because, well, ultimately, they're blocking them from getting paid, right? Also, a reminder, make sure you don't miss out on my real estate program. It's a $10,000 course for 99 bucks. When to buy, how to buy, market cycles, all the stuff, what I do and love and are passionate about. Check it out. The first two videos are free. It's in the description. It's totally cool. Meanwhile, Minnesota spent its unemployment surplus and had to borrow heavily from the federal government to cover their payments. Don't you wish you could do this? Just like, yeah, I can't cover my bills. I'll just borrow from the government for almost no, no interest. Now, it has a debt of $1 billion. Uh, $1 billion. They cannot pay off. Weirdly enough, 
Minnesota never dipped into the actual federal American Rescue Plan money to help repay the massive debt. They just need to decide whether to follow current law and practices, which assesses employers for their cost. This will be atrocious for Minnesotans to be able to stay competitive. This is actually not good. They also look at other ways to lower the um, expected hike in payroll taxes. They have to, because otherwise they won't be competitive. Walt's secretary, um, Claire Lancaster, said to the governor, has not yet decided how to approach the issue or how or when to pay the UI debt. That's unemployment insurance. She said, quote, the governor is looking at all the options. Our administration is listening to business leaders, legislation, legislators, and workers to determine the best path forward. Minnesota isn't alone necessarily. There are 10 states in total that still have unemployment debt that they're just kind of stuck with. And I know all of you are waiting for the Kamala Harris story about why she was wearing you know, headphone jacks, Apple headphone jacks. The federal government spent about $660 billion worth of federal unemployment across the whole United States. Minnesota went over $7 billion, which helped thousands of families, allowed the state to recover from the recession in record time, right? The state ran down its surplus of $1.5 billion and began borrowing. That's the debt that needs to be repaid now plus a 2.27% interest. Again, Minnesota is one of the 10 states that still have debt. They didn't use the American Rescue money. Some people did, which I thought was pretty smart. So who knows how the governor plans to pay off this debt? I don't know. Maybe he'll put on a different credit card. Maybe they'll hope for another bill and somehow pay the money from that. We'll keep you updated and let you know what happens there. And finally, we got to talk about it. We know that employees who were out of work because of no fault to their own are able to collect unemployment benefits after layoff were eligible for benefits just like most employees who lose their jobs from for reasons other than gross misconduct, quote, other than gross misconduct, end quote. That means employees who quit their jobs can also collect unemployment benefits depending on the reason they quit. Typically, an employee, and you definitely want to figure this out before you quit, I'm just saying. Typically, an employee who quits voluntarily without a, quote, good cause, end quote, is not typically eligible for unemployment benefits. For example, if you quit your job because your job doesn't offer growth opportunities, you're not eligible for unemployment benefits. You can't want to grow yourself, right? While this decision may lead to a better quality of life, you're not gonna get unemployment check while you're trying to get things together, make it better. In some states, former employees are eligible for benefits if they leave the job for personal reasons. So you can leave for personal reasons. For example, to relocate when a spouse gets a distant job or because of family emergency requires the worker to be at home, which begs the question, what if your wife goes and then you end up divorced and you're stuck there? Does that still count? I don't know. In other words, benefits are only available to employees. Uh, reasons for leaving are job related in some way. So if you had to quit your job for a good cause, you can still get your unemployment benefit for 26 or 27 weeks, depending on what state you're in. So make sure you check. Please uh, let me know in the comments like what your experience is. Remember, unemployment benefits are still available in most states. 26, 27 weeks, you're good. PUA, still backlog not open we're waiting for it to open and it's not open yet if you're still fighting for those pua benefits don't give up the fight please stick in there i hear every day of people actually getting their benefits so please check in there. the unemployment numbers are 4.2 we didn't cover all the job stuff because it wasn't that big of a thing to cover so thank you for watching i'm andrew cartwright